So you can see over here, I have my um, picture of the different chakras. And it might be interesting to you to notice that inside, they all are lotus flowers. And chakras are depicted as lotus flowers because they have beautiful potentiality, right? The lotus rises up from the earth, much like the Muladhara chakra at the bottom, rises up from the earth. And it, the lotus represents purity. It represents resurrection. So it's a very nice symbolism there. What is a chakra? A chakra is a spinning wheel of light. The word chakra, like it, you may know in your asana practice, chakrasana, the wheel pose, it means a wheel, a wheel of spinning energy. And the velocity that it spins at can be different throughout the day. Also, chakras are interdependent. So they rely on one and the other to be open and functioning um, properly so they can function properly. They're like spinning vortexes of energy, and they are along the main line of the energy channels called the shushumna that lies along the line of the spine. And they have distinct energy to them, much like the ener distinct energy in rooms in a temple or rooms in your home. Every room has a distinct energy. Every chakra on the subtle body has a distinct energy. And when they're in balance, then this energy helps us to be in balance emotionally, physically, and mentally. So this is what I'm talking about, the subtle bodies. This is something you can't really see, but you can definitely feel it when one of these chakras is not quite in alignment for you or is out of balance, is either excessive or deficient. And we'll be talking about those chakras as we go through our asana practice today. It is an all levels practice. So I'll be giving modifications to step back from the pose or to move forward if you'd like. It's an open practice. Take it as you'd like today. Let's look at what a chakra feels like now. I'll give, a, I'll give you an example of what a chakra feels like. So I'm gonna turn a little this way so you can see my hands. I'm gonna stretch my hands up, but my right palm's facing down, my left palm's facing up. And I'm going to start to move my fingers quickly. And you want them to really open. Go ahead and join me. Open, 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 close, open, close, open, close, really fast. Keep going. Your hands might get a little tired. You're creating prana in your hands. You're creating energy vortex in your hands. And everything that you do affects your chakras. Everything that you eat, your experiences in your life, sometimes your experience in, in past lives. Now, turn them upside down. So now your left palm is down and your right palm is up. Really fast. Open. Don't forget to open them. Really spread the fingers. And change them once again. We're going to get lots of energy in our hands. And upside down again. Good. Now bring your hands apart and just feel how they're being magnetically pulled towards one another. Don't do it on your own. You might get it started, but then just let it happen on its own. And just close your eyes for a moment and feel the energy in between your hands. You might feel like a spinning ball of energy. This is... Very much what a chakra feels like, a beautiful spinning ball of energy along the line of the spine. You can even shape shift it a little bit, turn it. Really feel that draw inward. And that's what a chakra feels like, that spinning vortex of energy. Now we're going to talk about awakening them and balancing them today. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll be talking about excessive characteristics and also deficient characteristics. Here's the chakras. Muladhara chakra, base of the spine. Swadhisthana chakra, just below the navel. Manipura, fire element, here at the solar plexus. Heart chakra, anahata. Vishuddha, throat chakra. Ajna, center of the eyebrows, top of the head, Sahasrara. Each one has their own seed sound, a bija mantra. Bija means a seed. And that seed sound, when 
and chanted with intention will help to balance each chakra. And sometimes just bringing awareness to the chakra is all you need to do to bring them back into balance. Bringing awareness, a little bit of attention. The Bija mantras are as follows. Lam. Say it with me. Lam. That opens Muladhara Chakra, base of the spine chakra, our earth element. Next one up. Vam. Again. Vam. Just below the navel. This is a wonderful water element chakra for creativity, intimacy, fluidity. Next, move into the solar plexus area. Ram. This is fire. Say it once again. Ram. Feel the fire in the belly. This is willpower, how we take care of ourselves and others. Next one up, Anahata Chakra, emerald green color. Yum. Again. Yum. This is love, joy, unity, compassion, generosity, peace, kindness, relationships, good relationships. Then we come into the throat chakra, Vishuddha chakra. Vishuddha means purity. So this is purification. The Bija mantra is Ham. Say it again. Ham. Then we come into Ajna Chakra, center of the eyebrows. This is the area of perception, inner knowledge, inner wisdom, our intuition. This is the eye that I say likes to see or can see on a spiritual level what the other two eyes cannot see. And the Bija mantra for awakening this psychic center is, I bet you know it, Om. Say it again. Om. And then we come to Sahasrara, the top of the head, violet in color. It's open to the universe. The central issue of the Sahasrara chakra is awareness, consciousness, awakeness, wisdom, knowledge, spiritual awareness. And the Bija mantra there is bring the tongue to the roof of the palate, and it's a silent om. The tongue to the roof of palate will really shake the top chakra. Try it again. So you can bring the chakras into balance by chanting the bija mantras, wearing the colors, eating food that are the colors, uh, psychotherapy through chakra awareness, chakra awakeness, chakra healing stones. There's so many ways. Another way is movement. The bottom chakras are your physical chakras, muladhara, swaristana, manipura. These are the physical chakras. The heart chakra, anahata, is the bridge between the physical chakras and the spiritual chakras, the upper three. Anahata is the bridge, right? But it's very useful also to practice some postures for the lower chakras. And these lower chakras um, are a little harder to open than the upper ones at the beginning. And then if you don't have time to do asana for all of the upper chakras, you can sit in meditation and you're good to go. All right, but today we'll be practicing different asanas for different um, chakras to bring them into balance and bring awareness to the places where you might be excessive and or deficient, okay? So let's start in with our Bija Mantra from the bottom to the top. You can join me and take your hands towards each one. For the Muladhara Chakra, we bring our hands down. So it's Lam, Swarisana, Vam. Manipura, Yam, heart, I'm sorry, Ram for Manipura, Yam for heart, Ham, 
the throat, om, top of the head, lam, vam, ram, yam, ham, om, mm. Ready to try it with me three times. Use your hands if you want. Lam, vam, ram, yam, ham, om, mm. Lam, vam, ram, yam, ham, om, mm. One more. Lam, vam, ram, yam, ham, om, mm. So just by chanting those wonderful bija mantras, you've done a lot to awaken and align your chakra system. We're going to practice a little breathing that also helps to balance your right and left sides of your body. Left hand in yana mudra, index finger to the thumb. Right hand will be in Vishnu. Right hand comes into a fist. Open the thumb and the last two fingers. We're going to change from which side we're breathing. Join me now, closing off the right nostril. Inhale through the left. Breathe all the way up from your toes on the left side, all the way up to the vortex, the center of the eyebrows on the left. Exhale through the right. Go all the way down your body. Inhale, right nostril. Bring it up from your toes, all the way to the center of the eyebrows. Exhale, left nostril, bring it down. Two more rounds, breathe in. Breathing out on the right, from the center of the eyebrows all the way down to the right toes. Breathe in, right toes, center of eyebrows. Breathing out on the left. Center of eyebrows to left toes. One more round. Inhale on the left. Exhale right. Inhale right. And exhale left. and release. Take a moment to close your eyes. Thumbs and index finger are touching and the palms are laying on your legs. Chin is towards the throat, back of the head is high. Just feel the energy in each area of your body, base of spine, muladhara chakra, area of survival. Swadhisthana chakra, little higher up, just under the navel, emotions, live here, intimacy, creativity. Higher yet, go to the solar plexus, yellow in color, Manipura chakra, power will live here. Anahata, go to the heart center, love, relationships. Vishuddha chakra, throat center, communication, more creativity. Com creative communication, how you express yourself. Center of the eyebrows, intuition, imagination, visualization, live here. And then the very top of the head, Sahasrara Chakra, awareness lives here. This is your conscious center, your wisdom, knowledge, openness to the whole universe. Are you part of the universe or do you separate yourself? This is our spiritual center. And then we'll open the eyes. And just by bringing your awareness to those areas, it might have given you some inclination where you could even do some work. If not, let's move forward. All right. Hands are down. Your knees can be on a blanket. We need one blanket and one block for today. Knees are under the hips. Wrists are 
under the shoulders unless you have pain in your wrists and you can walk your hands forward or even turn your hands out. I'm gonna start with cat cow, dropping the belly. You can go slow, looking up between the eyebrows. Exhale, rounding the spine, gazing into the navel, nice and slow. Or you can go faster. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. See what you need. If you need a little more energy to awaken your chakras today, then go a little faster. You just want to treat it like a, a practice for inquiry. Go a little slower. Up to you, fast or slow. Start to incorporate ujjayi breath. Slight constriction of the throat on the inhale and the exhale. One more. And come back to a neutral spine. Bring your bottom back towards your heels and your bottom goes to the left. Swing your legs forward. Madhi Chasana to get a nice twist in the spine. We're just waking up the spine to start. Bend your right knee, fist of space between the foot and the leg. Wrap your left arm around. Place your right hand behind you so you can be facing forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Now, the more straight your left leg is, the more stability you'll get in the Muladhara Chakra area, your groundedness. Exhale, twist your belly right, ribs right, heart right. So these warm-up exercises are really working on all of the chakras, a little less so in the upper two, but certainly the more physical chakras and also the throat with the twists. Keep the left leg active, and then we're going to break them down into specific postures for specific asanas, or for specific chakras. One more breath. On the inhale, bring the head forward, shoulders forward, and rest of body. Right leg goes forward, left foot comes in. Wrap your right arm around. Take your left hand behind you. Now squeeze your right leg. Keep your groundedness through the pelvic floor. Engage a little mula bandha. Lift the pelvic floor a bit. Squeeze a leg. Flex a foot. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist belly left. Ribs left. Heart left. And then the head left. Head goes last. A nice opening through the heart chakra. Two more breaths. Keep bringing your chin towards your left shoulder, awakening the throat chakra, your purification center, communication center, pure communication. And then on the next inhale, the head comes forward, the shoulders and the rest of the body. Bring your leg long and shake them out. And then bring both feet behind you and come back to all fours once again. And we're going to step forward from here to a standing pose. So I'd like to put my fingers in two tented fingertips. Step the right foot through, left foot through. Bend the knees, hands to the waist. Inhale, rise. For lateral flexion in the spinal column. So feet are together. Inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, bend over to your right. Everybody's going right. If you want to add a little bit to this, you can take your right hand to your left wrist, but you want to lift the left side of your body. So I'm not so concerned about reaching far right. It's more about opening. We're creating space. Space for clarity, space for healing of chakras. One more breath. Inhale, back to the center. Rest your arms a moment. Tadasana. Inhale, reach arms up. And here we go to your left. Reach high through the right side. Try not to swing the hips to the right. Just lengthen the whole right side. Right underarm to the sky. Gaze is in the center still. One more breath. 
and back to the center. So in Tadasana, this is a wonderful posture for grounding. This is a wonderful posture for awakening the Muladhara chakra. The best postures for awakening the lowest chakra are standing postures. So we spread the toes, lift them off the floor, take the big toe down, and then the other toes down. Right, slowly lifting through the arches of the feet. The rights of the Muladhara chakra are to be here, to have, to stay, to be firm. The demon is fear, and fear shakes us. Fear makes us instable, unstable. The goals of the Muladhara chakra are stability, grounding, prosperity, and trust. Excessive in this chakra, there might be excessive heaviness, sluggishness. You might have a tendency towards hoarding or materialism. If you're deficient in this chakra, you might be excessively thin, have unreasonable fears, maybe even a lack of discipline, be a little spacey, be more in the head than you are in the earth. This is the earth chakra. So for a little while, through our Surya Namaskara C, and we'll only practice it twice, and our standing postures, we'll be working mostly on the Muladhara chakra. So, and you have the option today to come back to Tadasana in between each standing posture or wait five breaths in downward facing dog. But let's get started on our salutation. Cross the thumbs, inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, forward fold, keep your connection to the earth. Inhale, right foot steps back, lift your heart. Exhale, left foot steps back. Nice, long down dog. Inhale, come to a plank, and you can continue on and swing through or stop in your plank. So here's the plank. If you've done swing through, go back to down dog. Plank, you can go to knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. So you have some choices there. You can take the swing through or take knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, right foot steps forward. Exhale, left foot steps forward. Cross your thumbs, bend your knees, lift high. Exhale, keep grounded. Spread your toes. Inhale, left foot steps back. Exhale, right. You have an option to swing through. I'll be doing swing through on this one. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, left foot steps forward. Exhale, right. Inhale, lift your heart. Spread your toes. Exhale, let's try it again. Forward fold. Inhale, right foot steps back, way back. Exhale, left, down dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cobra. Bhujangasana. Exhale, down dog. Press your hands firmly into the earth. You have a right to be here. Inhale, right foot steps forward. Exhale, left. Bend the knees. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, left foot steps back. Exhale, right. Swing through or knees, chest, and chin. I'm going to come to plank. Knees, chest, and chin. Cobra. Downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, inhaling. Exhale, right foot steps forward. Inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, Tadasana. So in Tadasana, the shoulders are over the hips. Hips are over the ankles. 
muscles, ears. So you have the option to step forward in each one of these, after each one of these different standing postures. We have three. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, bend the knees, stick the bottom out, forward fold. Inhale, step your left foot back, Virabhadrasana one. If you need something more, you could go to Chaturanga, up dog, down dog, before you come into warrior one. And find your arm position in warrior one that works well for you. Arms here, arms here, palms together. Feel the ground beneath you. Sink your toes in and rise up out of it. Rise up out of the earth through the upper body. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. One more breath. Now you have the option to step forward into Dasana or downward facing dog for five breaths. All right, if you're standing forward, you're gonna step your right foot back four, Virabhadrasana one with the left foot forward. Right toes are going to point to about one o'clock on a clock. Front knee is bent. Otherwise, step forward into warrior one, left foot from downward facing dog. So press down and lift up. Spread your toes just a little more. Use the balls of your feet. Push through them. Turn the eyes up. It doesn't mean you have to turn your chin up. One more breath. And you have the choice. You can step forward or go to downward facing dog. I'm going to step forward for this one. Tadasana, five breaths, or downward facing dog, five breaths. Wherever you can find inquiry, the easiest. There's no right or wrong. Chakras are very individual. Everybody feels them a little bit different from the next person. All right, if you're in down dog, step the right foot forward, warrior two. If you're at the front, step the left foot back, right foot forward, warrior two. So back foot is 90 degrees. Front knee is bent. Extend your arms and turn your chin to the right. Try to bring your chin into alignment with the right arm. Five breaths. I want you to pull the feet towards one another. Squeeze them like you're, gonna, you're going to bring them to touching, but don't move them. Squeeze and really bring the energy all the way up the leg lines. Think about your rights your earthly rights, your tribal force, your roots. One more breath. Option to step forward or take down dog. I'll take down dog this time. Bring your hands down, five breaths into Tadasana, stepping forward or down dog. Up in down dog, step your left foot forward and open your right foot 90 degrees. If you are in Tadasana, step your right foot back. Left leg is bent. Right foot is 90 degrees. Now, when you spread the toes and lift up, I want you to extend your arms out in either direction as if the energy that you're bringing up from your feet is going through your legs, through your torso, and it reaching out through the fingers. 
Take your chin, the left arm. Squeeze the legs, pull the energy of the feet together. These are the strengthening postures for Muladhara Chakra. We spend more time in Muladhara than any other chakra, except for at the end with meditation, because you have to open the Muladhara Chakra first because they are interdependent to shine the light up towards the other chakras. Your choice, Tadasana or Downward Facing Dog. We have one more standing posture to really feel our connection to the earth. And it's Parsvakonasana, side angle pose. From here, step your left foot back again, 90 degree angle, or step your right foot forward if you're in down dog. Just back to warrior two once again. Now bring the right arm, option one, to thigh, left arm to sky. Option two, hand to a block if you'd like, on the inside of your leg, or on the floor, or even a bind, if that's your dharma today. Now feel your connection under your right hand. Feel all the places you're touching the floor, or your yoga mat. Squeeze the legs, use the energy of your feet, press the points behind each toe into the floor. Good, and then bring your hand down, option to step forward or take down dog. I'll take down dog this time. And you can vary it, you don't have to do the same one each time. Shake it up a little bit. Press firmly into the earth with the balls of your feet behind the toes and your hands, leaving a little space in the arches, a little space in the palms. Press firmly into the fingers and then lift everything else from that pressing down. Press down, root down to rise. Now left side, Parsvakonasana, left foot steps forward, right foot opens 90 degrees. Here we are. Think about which option you'd like. Stepping the right foot back if you were in Tadasana. Left foot forward. Left arm to thigh. Right arm to sky. Or hand down. Maybe you use a block. Maybe you take a bind. Whatever you did on the other side, try the same here. And then coming up and stepping forward, everybody stepping to the front. So not downward facing dog. We're going to play a little with our balance. Balance poses are great tellers of how we're doing with our Muladhara Chakra, how we're feeling our connection to the earth. Right, so we're going to bend our knees, taking Garudasana's day, step the right foot forward. And I want you to cross it, but leave the toe on the floor. Extend your arms out and reach the right arm under the left arm. So this is one option where you can bring the palms together. Another option would be bringing the hands to the elbow, to the shoulders and lifting your elbows a little bit. Once you're here, feel free to lift the foot if you'd like, wrap it around if you'd like. Five breaths. Feel the roots and rise up from your roots. One more breath. And release freely. Great work. Okay, let's shake out the left ankle a little. Bend the knees slightly. Left leg wraps around. Toe is on the floor. Arms out. Left arm under right. Left. 
choose? Am I going to lift the leg, keep it on the floor, or wrap it? Either way, maybe your arms are here, hands are to the shoulders, or right in front of the face. Elbows are as high as the shoulders. And release as gracefully as you can. Crossing the legs, see if you can sit down without using your hands. If you need them, please take them. Take advantage of them. Otherwise, sit down slowly and with control. You might want to grab a blanket to sit on for bound angle pose. So we've done our work in Muladhara Chakra. We've done our work with our connection to the earth. Now we're moving into the water element, Swadhisthana Chakra. So I like to sit on a little bit of a blanket, a little bit of a lift, the very front. I'm just going to move my knees a bit. The central issue with Swadhisthana Chakra is emotions, intimacy, pleasure, allowing yourself to enjoy life, have intimacy, healthy intimacy. Allow yourself to feel. So close your eyes here and feel for a few moments. What does it feel like when you're opening your knees like butterfly wings? The goals of the Swadhisthana Chakra are fluidity, pleasure, feelings. The rights of this chakra is to feel. The right is to feel. And the demon of this chakra is guilt. To be guilty, to feel guilty. Maybe someone provoked that or some situation. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, you can take your block if you'd like and put it on your feet and fold forward. Or you can go forward in another way. You can open your feet. But there's some space here, right? It's not really close in. There's some space. It's a mild bound angle pose. So folding forward, as you're folding forward, I'll tell you a little more about the Swadhisthana Chakra. Excessive characteristics would be overly emotional, maybe having poor boundaries. You can imagine water kind of getting sloppy, not having boundaries, right? Um, being the addictive personality, being OCD, these would be excessive characteristics of the Swadhisthana Chakra. Now, if you're deficient in this chakra, you might have signs of frigidity, frigidity um, emotional numbness, you don't allow yourself to feel, you have fear of pleasure. Overly type A. Nicely done. Inhale coming up. And we are in the next chakra up. So since we opened the gateway, now we can move up swiftly. So we're moving into Manipura Chakra, solar plexus area. Let's take the right leg out. Bring the left leg in. You might want to use your block for this. Cross the right leg over. And we're going to take a little twist here. So it, maybe you have a grumpy knee, you can extend the leg instead, crossing the leg over. I'm going to wrap the left arm around. We're here for about 10 breaths. Inhale, reach your right arm high. Exhale, twist your belly right, ribs right, heart right, head right. Good. Lift through the spine. So press down firmly through this, that right hand. Get your groundedness so that you can rise. Manipura Chakra. This is the solar plexus area. Color is yellow, like the sun, right? And its central issue is power and will. The goals of the Manipura Chakra are vitality, spontaneity, right? Self-esteem. The right here is to act, but the demon is shame, being shameful to act. Three more breaths.
One more breath. Now bring the head forward, inhaling, and the shoulders and the rest of the body. Shake out your legs. Good work. And then we're going to bring the other side in. So we're going to take the right leg, bend it, open it, and the left leg over on the top. Lift the spine. So you want the right, you want the left foot to be solid on the floor. So you need to be grounded so that you can lift. That's why Muladhara Chakra is first. Have that strong foundation, then everything else will rise from that foundation. Right arm wraps around, left arm reaches up and back. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, twist belly left, ribs left, heart left, head left. Hmm. Let's talk a little more about the Manipura Chakra. You can keep your gaze left. You can even close your eyes and visualize a beautiful yellow color at the area of the solar plexus. So excessive qualities in this particular chakra would be dominating, possessiveness, maybe be using your power to manipulate others, being aggressive, um, also constantly active, not being able to be still in these postures, either constantly active in your body or your mind. Deficient might be a weak will, right? Poor self-esteem, shy, passive, fearful. This is the fire chakra. So if you have a lot of fire, too much fire too, like on a physical level, it could be gastric issues, too much acid in the stomach, heartburn, those kinds of things. But this is where you create a little fire for some energy, for some self-expression, to get over that bridge of the heart chakra into other more spiritual chakras. So it's kind of the oomph part of the lower physical chakras. That last lift over the bridge. On the next inhale, take the head forward, shoulders, ah, and then the rest of the body. And we're going to stretch out our legs once again. Okay, so for our heart chakra, because here we are right here now, anahata. Anahata means unstruck, unstruck chakra. This one doesn't be, need to be struck to feel. This is our feeling chakra, our love chakra, our good relationships chakra. So one option today is Satu Bandhasana. You can use a block under the sacrum. For a place of inquiry, remember that each posture is simply a place of exploring and feeling. A little bit of inquiry. You can remove the block and lift your bottom. Be here for about two minutes, though. Or if you're really feeling like you need to open the heart area, then you can reach all the way into Urdhva Dhanurasana. Right? So choose your position. About two minutes will be here. I'll talk to you a little bit about the Anahata Chakra as you're in your posture, listening, inquiring, feeling. So this is the love and relationship uh, center, right? Balance, compassion, about some self-acceptance here. These are the goals, good relationships, unity, Compassion for others, being able to see motivation as to why some people act a certain way. That comes from here. Empathy. The right is to love and to be loved. The demon is grief. Maybe something's happened that's closed your heart over time. And you're still grieving. So a great way to release that is forgiving or letting go if you can. It will free space in the heart chakra for you to bring more love in. Excessive might look like codependency, poor boundaries, maybe even jealous or narcissistic. Deficient in this area might be shy, lonely. You separate yourself from others. You have a a lack of empathy, um, and even bitter and critical, where you might lash out at others. Mm 
this chakra element is so, I like to say when you're in love, you feel like you're walking on air. That's an easy way to remember the element represented in this chakra. Airy. The Bija Mantra is yum for yummy. And then release your hands and come down slowly. And please rock side to side. So feet are here. Rock side to side. Separate your feet, the width of your mat, side to side. Be here for one minute. And then again, you have some wonderful choices to make for the Vishuddha Chakra. And come to the center once again. Again, with the Vishuddha Chakra, throat chakra, you have the option of taking your bottom on a block, pulling in the knees, and lifting the legs and bringing your chin to your throat. Another wonderful way to bring your chin to your throat is put a blanket under your head. And really feel that connection of the chin to the throat, okay? Otherwise, shoulder stand. So my blanket is here. My head is here. And I'm going to lay back on the blanket and bring the feet to Halasana. And then lift. We are here for three minutes today. So find the appropriate posture for you. Chin is touching the throat. Choose which one you'd like and stay and inquire within. The Shuddha Chakra. The central issue is communication. Also creativity because this is our expression center. So this is where maybe you don't express yourself well with words, but you might be a wonderful cook or dancer or the creative type in another way. So this is also our creative um, connection center. The goals are clear communication, saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Resonance, so what you say comes true, right? You walk the talk. That is what this area is all about. So the rights in this area are to speak and to be heard. The demon is lies. Excessiveness might look like excessive talking or even an inability to listen, overextending yourself in some situations. Deficient might look like fear of speaking, too timid, or even a voice that's very, very high like this and not able to resonate what you really feel. So a lack of creativity, some even say poor rhythm. The element here is sound. The color is light sky blue, Vishuddha chakra. Purification is what Vishuddha means. Now, if you were in the full shoulder stand, please take your feet behind your head again, coming out into Halasana. Bring your palms down to the floor and roll down slowly. Right, and lay flat on the floor. If your bottom was on a block, legs in the sky, bend your knees to your chest, and then take the soles of the feet to the floor, lifting the bottom, removing the block. Everybody laying flat on the floor for a few moments here. It'll be your five breaths. You've done a lot of work so far. Give yourself some wonderful grace. You showed up, you got on your mat. You're exploring some really interesting areas. You're bringing balance to my, what might have been out of balance. And the reason we get out of balance sometimes is anything from eating habits, sleep habits, negative conditioning, this life, past lives. There's a lot that can...
negative thinking. All right, from here, bend your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a good squeeze and then release it once again. Ah, all right. We're coming into fish pose. So we're gonna reach our elbows long, lifting your heart. You have the option to put something under your heart instead, like your blanket if you'd like. Otherwise, lift your heart and walk your elbows forward for Matsyasana. Crown of the head comes to the floor. Or lay over a blanket. We want to really open the throat chakra, and here's why. So sometimes our communication gets blocked, right? This is a tricky area. That's why we're doing a couple of postures here. Also, this is the counter pose for our shoulder stand. But this is a tricky area because this can be a bottleneck area. And this is also one of the areas where we release chakra charge from. One of the main areas we say something or we express ourselves in a way. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to breathe in through the nose and breathe out with a big ah. Ready? Breathe in. Ah. Four more. Ah. Three more. Ah. Two more. Ah. One more. Excellent. Lift your head a little, bend your knees, and roll to the right side of your body. And then gently place your left hand down and come up to a seat. Very nice. So next we come to Asna Chakra, center of the eyebrows chakra. And you can use a blanket, you can use a block, I like to use a block for this and just put the forehead on a block. Bottom can be to heels unless you have knee flexion issues. Lift your bottom and bring your hands back by your feet. So we're in the second to the last chakra. Visualize at the center of the eyebrows, beautiful indigo color. Maybe you want your head on the floor, that's fine too. Indigo color, remember that Bija mantra was Om. So this is our psychic center. Right? Our intuition lives here, our imagination, our psychic perception is our goal here. Right? Also, I like to say that accurate interpretation of a situation is the goal of the Ajna Chakra, seeing things the way they really are. And sometimes that's done with our intuition. It's not done with our other two eyes. So sometimes we have to interpret that um, with our psychic center, how do you really feel about it, right? The, the rights are to see, and the demon is illusion when you can't see, when there's a veil. If you're excessive in this area, you might have a lot of headaches, hallucinations, even delusions, or difficulty concentrating. That can indicate some difficulty with the Ajna Chakra or some excessiveness in the Ajna Chakra. Deficiency can be poor memory. Um, maybe you can't see patterns, you can't see colors. Or you're in denial. You're in denial that one could see something that the eyes don't see, that you see on a spiritual level, that you see on a psychic level. So. Denial of that could be a deficiency. Aren't you open to at least thinking maybe? The element is light, seeing a beautiful indigo light at the center of the eyebrows. And of course, with these upper couple of chakras, the last two here, you don't even have to fold forward to do it. You could stay seated. One more big breath here. Now gently lift your forehead, come up slow. Staying as if you can, 
you know, you can always put a blanket under your bottom between your heels and your bottom. That's okay too, or a block if you need. And we're coming in next to the Sahasrara Chakra, violet in color. So let's just take a moment for this one. There's a lot of energy to bring our awareness to the very, very top. Listening for a moment, one hand inside of the other, maybe your thumbs are touching. And bringing all of your awareness to the top of the head, Sahasrara Chakra. See there a thousand petaled lotus at the top of the head. Sahasrara means a thousand petals, thousand petaled lotus. Now see an opening at the top of the head. And what is it opening to? I like to visualize my opening to miracle and possibility. To the possibility that I am at one with all beings. I am part of this entire universe. I'm not alone. I'm not separate. Maybe I'm even at one with the cosmos. and then gently open the eyes. So you have an option to stay here with me as I explain it and inquiring about the top of the head, or if you want a little more energy there, you can take rabbit pose, or you can even take headstand. If you know it, you can take that now. Crown of the head comes down towards the floor, forehead comes very close to the knees, forehead's almost touching the knees, and you lift your bottom very high. Chin is touching the throat. This is excellent for the upper three chakras. Okay, so you can lift from here. Option to stay there. Option to take headstand or stay seated with me. So the central issue of the Sahasrara chakra is awareness. And I like to add to that awakeness. So it's an awake awareness, a buddhi mind. The goals are wisdom, knowledge, spiritual connection, consciousness. The, the rights are to know. Mm -hmm. The demon would be another, like, like illusion, mindlessness. You're excessive in this chakra. It might be, it might show itself as being overly intellectual, only being in your mind, or even having a spiritual addiction, having a dissociated body, being deficient might look like spiritual, spiritual skepticism, apathy, not interested in anything. Separateness, wanting to keep yourself separate from the whole. Not seeing yourself as something bigger, but yet staying in the small self. That would be deficiency in this chakra. The element is conscious thought. Conscious thought. We'll be here for three more breaths. Top of the head, violet in color. One more breath. And slowly coming out of your posture, wherever it was. Let's all take two fists and put it under the forehead, relaxing your neck. Take one more big breath here. 
And then slowly lift the head. Come up for a moment. And then prepare for your guided meditation in Shavasana. So you might like to have a prop for that or two. A blanket can be under your head. If you prefer not to lay down, that's okay too. You can sit for this guided journey through the chakras. But this time we're going to be taking it from the top down. So find your position that you're most comfortable in. We'll be here for about 12 minutes. Are you ready? Are you very, very comfortable? If you could make yourself more comfortable, even 1% more comfortable, Please do so now. And remember your journey going upwards from the bottom, from the roots to the top of the universe. Imagine all of your chakras along the line of the spine, perfectly aligned, spinning together in harmony. As you rose up the line of the chakras, you actually depleted their energy to get to the next one. So we're going to replenish them. Bring your awareness, please, as we journey downwards to the top of the head, Sahasrara Chakra. The color is violet. This is your awareness center. This is your wisdom, your knowledge, spiritual connection, your consciousness center. Are you connected or separate? Bringing energy into that very important chakra. Then bring your awareness, please, down into the Ajna Chakra, center of the eyebrows, indigo in color. The central issue is intuition, imagination. Psychic perception, accurate interpretation, seeing, imagining, visualizations. What can you imagine here in this indigo chakra center? Next. Bring your awareness down into the light blue throat center, the Shuddha Chakra, purification center. This is the area of your expression. How do you express yourself? Do you listen well? Listening is also part of the Vishuddha Chakra. Or do you focus on speaking? Are you able to concentrate when you speak and listen? Clear communication. Are you able to express yourself clearly? Do you mean what you say? And are you able to say what you mean? Maybe that's been taken away from you at some point, so it's more difficult now. Next, please bring your awareness down into Anahata Chakra, emerald green in color. It's along the line of the spine, but at the spiritual heart center. So a level of the heart, but on the line of the spine, not where the physical heart is. 
see their emerald green opening, opening because you can forgive, forgive easily because you don't grieve, you don't hang on. You have the right here to love and to be loved. You honor compassion, empathy, you have self-acceptance. You have a good relationship with others and yourself. Love and relationships live here. Nice open Anahata Chakra. Next, bring your awareness down a little lower to the solar plexus area, Manipura Chakra, yellow in color. Manipura means the jewel, the jewel of the city, this is called. Kind of the power center, right? Power will live here. I'd like to say this is the power of love center, not the love of power center. Your vitality comes from here, your spontaneity. Your self-esteem, how you uplift others comes from here. You act from here. Not in a dominant or manipulative way. At the same time, you're not passive. You have power and you uplift others with that power. You share the power. Yellow in color. How bright is your fire here? This is the fire element, filling it up so you can get done the things you'd like to get done today. Next, bring your awareness down below the navel, Swadhisthana Chakra. This means one's own place, Swadhisthana. Your emotions are here. Here's where you feel. This is your own place. This is personal. Intimacy is here. Passion is here. Your sense of pleasure. Do you allow yourself to have fun? Enjoy pleasure. Feel things. Really feel things, whether they're good or bad. You push them away, those feelings. This also is our creative center, along with the Vishuddha Chakra. Fluidity, do you transition easily from one thing to the next? Or do you have difficulty, you get stuck, you feel dry, not fluid. What do you feel here? That's the right here to feel. Not being overly emotional, only feeling. Having some sense from the other chakras, from the one above it, getting things done. Doing. Doing is above feeling, but grounding yourself is below feeling. So think about those three together. Hmm. And then next, bring your awareness and replenish the chakra, a very important chakra called the Muladhara Chakra. Mula means the root chakra. The root, the rooted, your tribal roots, your tribal honor, your partnerships. This comes from this area, base of the spine, earthy red color. The central issue is survival. Survival, stability, groundings, prosperity, trust. That's been shaken. Any of those have been shaken. They're hard to get back. Really bringing your awareness down into the Muladhara Chakra. The rights are to be here, to have. The demon is fear. You have too much of this wonderful earth element in you. You might be excessively heavy or you're in a phase of hoarding. You might be sluggish. Not enough earth energy. Maybe you have too much fear. A lack of discipline. You might be underweight, spacey. 
not grounded, not staying in one place for very long. Again, these acts together, earth element, muladhara chakra. Now visualize from the bottom to the top, red, orange, yellow, go to their place, green, blue, indigo, violet, all the way up to the top, and then from the top down, violet, indigo, you know where they're at. Light blue, the throat, heart center, green, manipura, yellow, just under the navel, swadhisthana, orange, base of the spine is red. In balance and aligned, ready for whatever comes next. You are balanced emotionally, mentally, and physically. Start to invite movement in your body, please. Fingers, toes, head, go side to side. If you are sitting, maybe you take some circles with your head. Take bigger stretches until you bend your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. Take one big breath in. Breathe out the mouth. And bring yourself to a seat carefully. One last time, the Bija Mantras together. Hands together. You're welcome to bring the hand to each hands to each place to emphasize the energy there if you'd like, or keep your hands at Ajna Cha, at the Anjali Mudra, right at the heart center. Lam Bam Ram Yam Ham Om. It's been an honor to lead your practice. Thank you so much for allowing me to. Om Shanti.